Hey, long riders, do you want to learn how to tie a blue winged olive without no hackle? Then you're at the right place, and we're going to start right now. Hello, welcome back long riders. In this video we are going to show you what we said in the beginning, a uh, hackless uh, blue winged olive dry fly and it was, uh, we're going to use these wings um, the guy that sold us these wings at the show showed us his version of a blue winged olive without a hackle and we're going to use his, he said they work Excellent in the creeks in our area. So give these a try. We're going to show you. Now, don't forget, if you're new here, subscribe so you don't miss any of our awesome tying videos. And also, make sure you check out the links below since we've added new ones. Make sure you check them out. And the materials list where you can, and the link below that where you can buy the materials that we're using in this fly. Now, that being said, make sure you get a thumbs up and comment because it helps us get more play on YouTube. So now, let's go to the vice. Oh yeah, one more thing before we get to the vice. Make sure you stay to the end of this video. At the end of the video, we'll have some important information for you. So watch this whole video and stay to the end. Now we're going to start this fly like we do every fly by debarbing the hook. And it makes the hook easier to get out of the fish's mouth, especially if you practice catch and release. And in this, on this fly, we're going to use 70 denier olive thread. And we're going to run that all the way back to the bend in the hook. Now we're going to show you the wings we use and pay attention on here. It's going to show you where you can order these wings. And we get nothing out of it. This is just advertising of a really cool guy that I met. I really like these wings, so I'd recommend you go pick them up. They float real well. But hey, if you don't want to order these wings and you want to just use something you have in your box, we're going to show you an alternative to using these wings. What we're going to do... So we're going to take some of this floating yarn. I have it in black. We're going to pay, take a strand off and then we're going to rip it in half and only use half of that to, for the wing. Now what you're going to do is you're going to wrap that material around the thread and pull up on it and then wrap your thread over around the, sh the shank of the hook as I show you here now what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull that down wrap thread wraps in front of it and then back of it and one around it to keep the wing from going too far this way and then start your figure eight and then when you're done you'll have a perfectly wide wing cut your uh, th your uh, wing material off as long as you want it make it as long as the shank of the hook or I like to do three quarters of the shank of the hook in this fly and there you have your wing so now let's go back to the other wing In the 
Now I'm going to show you how to use the other wing. You'll see at the base end of the other wing, it's like they burnt the wing or something to hold it together. It's a pretty cool idea. But what you want to do is measure your wing, put thread wraps at the at the where you want your wing, the height you want your wing to be. Measure it with your fingers, tie it in where you want it to be. Get a couple really tight thread wraps to hold that wing in place, and cut that black stuff off. And you want to kind of cut it as close as you can, and the rest of the material that you use will help start building up the body of the fly. Now you want to cover up that where you cut it off and try and put tight thread wraps so you can trap that down so you don't have too much bulk there. And then you want to kind of start forming your body. Now the rest of these steps will be the same whether you use the wings like I'm using or the other ones I showed you how to use. The, by using the thread, the uh, yarn instead of these wings, you don't have that bulk. So that is one nice thing about not using them, but I really love these. You don't know how, I mean, they float so much better than the yarn. And I love them a lot. So, anyhow, so all these rest of the steps you would do no matter what wing you use. So now we're going to tail in our, tie in our tail. Now we're going to use a weird tail material. We're going to use some of that flash dubbing. Um, as I showed you while I was talking there, I'm sorry, but talk to while I was showing it to you. And you're going to form a noodle, roll it around. If you haven't show, show, seen our other flies, go back and watch my old flies and show you how to do this. But you roll that a noodle up in your hand of that of that dubbing, and then tie that noodle in, and then you'll cut that off to length as your tail. And I know a lot of you guys are like, well, he's been using a lot of flash dub. Well, this is how this guy taught me to tie this fly, and it's been working real well. And the reason we're using flash dubbing is this guy used it all summer on a lot of flies. And I didn't tell you that. You know, I just showed you how to tie the flies, and some of them weren't used. I showed you how to use, but they worked so much better than the ones that I didn't use for that um, ice dubbing one. So that's why I'm sharing it with you. It works so well. And according to this guy, he said these flies are killer this tied this way. Now we're going to make our wing. We're going to pull it back, put thread wraps in front of it to make it stand up, and then start your figure eight. To make your split wing. Now we're going to take our thread back to where the tail starts so we get ready to dub this fly. Now we're going to apply some dry fly fine dubbing, an olive, and we're going to apply that real thin we want more wraps to apply the dubbing than we want. We don't want to have one wrap and it forms the whole body. So we're going to add real thin dubbing so we can make it more secure and hold the dubbing on better. And we want to make that dubbing noodle really long because it's going to go all the way up to the eyelet. So we're going to wrap it around, run it up to the wing, run the thread over the wing, in between the wing. And then up to the eyelet and leave just enough room to whip finish at the end. Jealousy whips 
skin tortures you for your lying, but you're trying. Please let this be over. We hear now we're gonna put on two sets of whip finish and head cement if you use. I don't like to use head cement. I'd add, rather add an extra uh, whip finish than to add head cement. So I'm gonna do that, and now that's it. So much easier to tie. It's a little less time consuming when you don't use hackle. But that's in if I take a closer look. Hey, Long Riders, I hope you like that fly. And I'm going to tell you a little story about a fly almost like this one. We were up in Pine Creek, and I had lost my box. I couldn't find my sulfur box. So we bought sulfurs at Pine, C Pine Creek. I know. I don't ever buy flies. This is the first time I bought flies in five years, but I needed them because that's what was hatching. So I went in there, and I bought a hackless deer hair sulfur. And Tracy had caught, caught a big, big brown on this fly. And so now I'm going to start showing you hackless flies. If you want to see a typical pattern um, with hackle tied dry fly, I'll try and show you right here. We tied one a long time ago last year in, in, on our YouTube channel. So you can check out them old videos. Um, all these videos we're going to tie from here on out. Well, you have to go back to them to see the cat skill st style fly or the dry fly, a traditional dry fly that we use here. I already made them videos. So you can go check them out. And if the videos, you go back and check out the videos and they're too blurry and you don't like, leave a comment and I'll redo it so you can see it again. And uh, that should end our blue winged olive stretch. Um, I suggest you go out and check out the blue, the WD-40 that we tied in the beginning of this uh, series. Is also good for blue winged olive emerger. And you want to tie these blue winged in size 18, 20, and 22. And I usually use 18s and 20s. I don't go down to 22s. I just, I think our olives in our area, and this is what you want to do is you want to look at the olives in your area and how big you think they are. I mean, I've seen them on our creeks around here in a size 14, 18, and 20. So you want to have them in your box. Um, if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and comment. The more you comment, the more thumbs up, you get more interaction on our videos. We get more playtime and more suggested videos on YouTube and it helps us out on YouTube. So make sure you give a thumbs up, comment, subscribe down here or at the end of this video. There will be a place up here, that's a little picture of me. You just click there and subscribe. And make sure you check out all the links below. We've added Bass Pro Shops, Target. Go just, you know, if you're gonna shop anyway, use our links, and we get money, and it helps us improve your ch your channel. The channel gets better. These videos will get better. Um, we're thinking about buying a new camera here in the spring, which make our fishing videos better, the tying videos better, everything get better. But uh, fortunately, they don't give me free stuff. So you keep doing, keep using them links, and keep helping our channel out. And we'll help you grow and make better videos. Um, I think that's it. if I never seen a blue wing olive um, spinner, but I imagine you could just tie just tie a really small spinner, kind of like um, a rusty rusty spinner, and tie that and use it in olive with a green. I'd use the flash as a tail, and that's how I tie a spinner up. I've never seen them on the creek. Um, never seen a spinner. I've seen them emerge and I've seen adults, but I've never seen the spinners. Whether that happens late at night when I'm not around, if it happens in your area, like I said, just tie a rusty spinner, use the the green olive tail, and uh, you can still use organza on the uh, wing, and then use olive as the material instead of the rusty brown. I uh, think that's it for this video. Now, like I said, don't miss any of our videos. Don't forget to subscribe. And right here is the end of the show.
Yay, and you can see the videos we did here earlier. You can see a video here that's just for you. You can also subscribe right here and go back and watch these playlists, man. We did some really cool videos you ain't going to want to miss. And make sure you subscribe because you ain't going to want to miss any upcoming videos either. So, stay tuned for more videos. Keep your lines wet, out of the trees, and only give them fish a sore lip.